Hello people, in this video let us look at what hypopion is, okay. So basically this is something to do with the eye. Yes, hypo is down, right. So hypo is down and pi, you know it is pus, right. Like you have heard pyogenic organisms, pus, pus, so something like that, okay. So basically here in the anterior chamber of the eye, so you can see here there is something, right. This is hypopion. This is the cornea, right. This is the lens. Between these two, see in front of the iris you have the anterior chamber which has the aqueous humor, correct? So behind the iris you have the posterior chamber. Posterior chamber is right here, not here or somewhere. Posterior chamber is right here. Anterior, posterior chambers both are in front of the lens only. Now this anterior chamber something gets accumulated. So let us say something gets, some inflammatory cells are accumulating here. This is hypopion, okay? This can happen lot of situations. So let us look at the definition first, okay. So what is hypo, hypo, pi on, okay. So it is pus in the anterior chamber. It may be seen in infectious, so many cases it can be there. So this much you understood, pus in the anterior chamber is called as hypo, pi on. Anterior chamber of what? Of the eye, that also you should say. Sometimes you will not know where this anterior chamber they are referring to. Pus in the anterior chamber of the eye. Okay, so a hypopion, understand this definition also, a hypopion consists of polymorphonuclear leukocyte, that means what? Neutrophils, polymorphonuclear leukocytes, leukocytes means WBCs, so polymorphonuclear means neutrophil, neutrophil types of WBCs, they accumulate where in the lower angle of the anterior chamber, eventually they become an enmeshed, they become enmeshed in a network of fibrin. Eventually, they become enmeshed in a network of fibrin. This is one type of definition. This is another definition. Now, let us look at the causes, guys. Why this hypopion happens? See, hypopion can happen because of many reasons. So, so many reasons. Let us look at them here. Infectious corneal ulcer. Okay, some of the reasons here they have given are infectious corneal ulcer. Iridocyclitis. Toxic anterior segment syndrome, something to do with anterior segment itself, anterior segment, anterior chamber here they are using word, here they are saying anterior segment, okay. That is called as TASS, toxic anterior segment syndrome. Then you have one more they have mentioned, endophthalmitis, endophthalmitis and panophthalmitis, okay. Panophthalmitis, pan everything, endophthalmitis. So here there is inflammation of the intraocular fluids, the vitreous and the aqueous. So if the vitreous and aqueous are inflamed, it is endophthalmitis. Interesting. Okay. So let us look at what panophthalmitis is also. So here they are saying including these intraocular um, uh, aqueous, vitreous, intraocular structures, coats, all the coats are also affected. So let us look at this difference. Endophthalmitis is the inflammation of internal structures of the eye. Like the uvea, retina, vitreous, sometimes the lens. Panophthalmitis is the all parts of the eye. Okay. So here it should be more like endophthalmitis. That will make a lot of sense, right? Okay, guys. So now we have learnt the uh, uh, what hypopion is. You have understood. You have understood what hypopion is. Hypopion can happen if there is corneal ulcer or if there is endophthalmitis, or if there is panophthalmitis, or if there is toxic anterior segment syndrome, syndrome or iridocyclitis. So iridocyclitis, basically irido means iris, something to do with iris. Cyclitis, they are referring to the ciliary body, etc. So basically everything is inflamed here. It is inflammation of the iris and the ciliary body. So that will become iridocyclitis. So is it clear guys as to when and all you can see this hypopion? Okay. So basically, this is a diagram shown here. Let us try to understand this diagram. So hypopion ulcer. Where is hypopion? Okay, hypopion is here. Ulcer is on top. Don't focus on that. Look at the hypopion. The extent of the ulcer they have shown here. This is the ulcer. The extent of the ulcer, leave that. So basically, you have to understand that <clears throat> F2G is the hypopion. Okay. See, in keratitis, they have shown one hypopion. So, when this person tilts, no, this fluid is also moving. Can you see? Are you able to see this color? <clears throat> so, when this person tilts his head, even this fluid is moving. Can you see? The fluid is here. So, basically, hypopion with shifting fluid level on tilting the head. 
This is a case of bacterial keratitis. Okay. Then, what is this photo? Bacterial corneal ulcer with hypopion. So here they are saying corneal ulcer is there along with hypopion. Okay. So now let us look at some other points here. Hypopion. Enumerate the causes of hypopion. Corneal ulcer. Iridocyclitis, retinoblastoma will cause something called as pseudo hypopion, so don't get confused here. Endoophthalmitis and panophthalmitis. Okay. So retinoblastoma will cause what? Pseudo hypopion. We are not going into that. We are looking at exact causes of hypopion. Corneal ulcer, iridocyclitis, endoophthalmitis, panophthalmitis. Guys, note that these corneal ulcers can be there without hypopion or with hypopion. Here we are focusing only on the word hypopion. Corneal ulcers are there which can have hypopion or cannot ha need not have hypopion. Okay, that also you should understand. That time it will become a simple corneal ulcer. If there is a hypopion associated with the corneal ulcer, it will become a hypopion corneal ulcer. This hypopion corneal ulcer we will take in the next video and understand completely about hypopion corneal ulcer. Here we are understanding what in this video. In this video we are only focusing on what it is hypopion. Okay. So let's move here. Where were we? Okay, we have finished this slide. Okay, coming to the pseudo hypopion, we saw this terminology, right? What is the pseudo hypopion? Let us look at this. We saw that it happens when, we saw that this happens in retinoblastoma. Pseudo hypopion, pseudo hypopion is due to collection of tumor cells in anterior chamber. So here what is collecting? Not pus. Here it is tumor cells. Oh my god. Okay. So what is pseudo hypopion? It is not pus. It is not inflammatory cells. It's not the neutrophils. It's not the WBCs. Not the polymorphonuclear. That is the neutrophils. It is something else. What is it? It is tumor cells. That becomes a pseudo hypopion. Where will you see it? You will see it in retinoblastoma which is obviously a... What is it? It's a malignant tumor. Okay, it's a malignancy. Okay. So, where were we? We were here. Let's go back to our hypopion video. Okay, hypopion slides. Okay, we are done with what pseudo hypopion is. Now, what do you mean by a hypopion corneal ulcer? So, basically in corneal ulcer, you can have uh, with hypopion or without hypopion. If it is a hypopion corneal ulcer, it is the same corneal ulcer which is associated with the uh, a collection of pus in the anterior chamber. Usually it is caused by pneumococcus, that is uh, streptococcus pneumoniae. So it is called as hypopion corneal ulcer. Same thing only they are twisting and turning and telling you. Okay. Now in Bechet's disease also, they have written something like hypopion. Iridocyclitis associated with hypopion. Okay. So, iridocyclitis, you know, is always, is, it can be associated with hypopion. So, iridocyclitis with hypopion. Okay. So, you are seeing all the instances wherever they have mentioned hypopion. So, exudation into anterior chamber, from where is it coming? From where is these, where are these uh, things coming from? You said the polymorphonuclear cells, the pus, the, from where exactly are all these coming? From where? So these are exudates from into the anterior chamber from the vessels of the iris and ciliary body. So from these blood vessels which are there in the iris and the ciliary body. Let's take a red here. So basically there is blood vessel in the iris and the ciliary body. From this who will come? The neutrophils should come actually, right? And then there will be exudates, right? So this, this is how you will get the hypopion formation. Next video, we will look at that specific term that is hypopion corneal ulceration, right? Ulceration with hypopion. This we will do in the next video, okay? Guys, what you should understand here is hypopion, one more thing you should understand here, it is usually sterile. That means there is no bacteria in it, usually. It is caused because of all that, but the hypopion itself is the exudate. It does not have bacteria, they are saying, because... Uh, uh, since the leukocytosis is due to toxins, it is not because of the actual invasion of bacteria. Because these bacteria are incapable of passing through the intact Desmet's membrane. Okay guys. 
So this hypopion guys, you sh you, what did you understand? One more thing, terminology here is that it is usually sterile. It will not have any bacteria. One more thing you should know here is who and all can cause this? Not just uh, this pneumococcus, that is you can have staphylococcus causing it, streptococcus causing it, gonococci causing it, pseudomonas pyocyanea causing it, even fungus, fungal hyphae can cause it, okay? Guys, why does this hypopion always is hypo? Because of gravity, right? That's why it's down. Just two more points we will tell you guys. If it is caused because of fungus, it will not move much because of the fungal hyphae, right? It will not move much, okay? And these things can get readily absorbed by the body. So you, sometimes you need not actually drain it and all that. Okay, they can get res readily absorbed. You will just need to treat the cause, right? Like um, the ulcerate, ulcerative process, etc. You can control and this hyperpion will get absorbed. They are saying that in case of uh, some fungal hypopion, you may have to give some antifungals. Okay, antifungals may be necessary. Anterior chamber wash with antifungals may be necessary. Okay, in some cases. Wherever it is because of fungus. So guys, some more points we added about hypopion here. Your gravity sterile it is usually sterile then uh, it can get readily absorbed if it is fungus it will not move much and uh, in some cases if it is fungus they may need to do an anterior chamber wash with antifungals okay that's all for now bye 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 hypopion can also lead to secondary glaucoma okay and uh, hypopion sometimes you cannot detect they'll be so less they can rapidly become more they can lead to secondary glaucoma also that is optic nerve damage, permanent damage, okay?